Here we do this. Here we do this. Here we do this. Here we do this. Let's do this thing. Hey now, hey now, don't treat me so good. Hey now, hey now, when the world comes in, let it come, let it come. A whole nother between us. They know they won't win. That's just me just singing a song, right? That I got stuck in my head for some reason. Hey now, hey now, don't treat me so good. <clears throat> Too bad I can't hit those high notes like I want to. I just can't hit them. I can't hit them like I want to. I got an isolated pawn to attack, though, and that's fun. Attacking isolated pawns is about as fun town as it gets. Because they are, ooh, wow, typically um, without minor pieces on the board, their, uh, their weakness is higher, is a, a good way to say it, I guess. Their, their weakness is, has gone up in value because usually what's associated with an isolated pawn is the open files and uh, open squares they get access to. So without minor pieces to use those those squares and without rooks actively attacking on the open files, can I just go grab that pawn? I'd love to. I probably could. Eh, what the heck. Not going to do it yet. Going to go overload his now open king. Only 20 seconds, though. When the world comes in, let it come, let it come. The whole nother between us. You know, they won't win. You know, they won't win. Hey now, hey now, don't treat me so good. Boom. No back rank checkmate for you, kitten. No back rank checkmate for you, kitty cat. Not happening, all right? I'm going to take that. I'm going to shake him, bake. Go get that pawn. Give a little check of Ruski. All right, I'll take it. Fine. If you insist... All right, I don't know what's going on with this voice today. I feel like I'm trying to sing like uh, like Prince or something. Whoa, what's he doing? Is he just is he gonna try to flag me right now? That's not fun. No one likes a flagger. Actually, I flag people all the time. It's literally like what I do, dude. Boom. I flag people all day. All day I flag people. All right, we'll play this guy a little rematch. He seems like a pretty good player. Plus, I. Uh, I don't even know if you guys can hear and see me right now. I could only be in, I could be in my own world. Did I forget to switch it back? I might have forgotten to switch it to the broadcast away from the starting soon banner. But I'm going to keep talking to myself as if I'm talking to all of you. Because um, that's how I roll. That's how I roll. Often. All right. We're going to try to get an attack going over here with the structure we've created. Uh, if he castles long, I'll probably still play g5, and now I'm going to put that pony on h5 and cause some slight irritation in king side, yeah? He's like, oh no, what am I going to do now, right? Defend the pawns. Oh, I should have just played a4. What was I thinking, right? Oh. Now I can go take f7. I can take everything. I feel like there's so many pawns to take, and there's just not quite enough time. I'm taking every pawn right now. I feel like what I'm doing is just nasty. Um, I'm taking every one of his pawns. I'm really not being very nice about this. I'm going to take there. I'm going to take another pawn. All right. <sighs> doing it. Done. I did it. Go then. Fine then. Be gone. I'm gone. Fine. Go then. Bye then. Gone. See ya. Bye. Now I'm going to take this pawn. Um, you know, bring the rook in. Maybe I'll play queen e6. I'd like to have a good day today, considering that I really, really did not play very good chess yesterday. I was playing some bullet in the downtime, the downtime that was my life, which is about the 30 minutes before I go home. And I started getting calls from, you know, the wifey and the mom and then the kids. And it was like one of those moments where you're totally putting yourself before your family. I didn't care. Because I wanted to play chess, and I just started ignoring the calls, but they kept calling, so I was just like, oh, right? So I had to answer the phone, <laughs> and uh, turns out I needed to come home, so maybe that's why I was playing bad. Subconsciously, I was probably guilty. I do a lot of things that make me subconsciously guilty, I've learned. Um, well, but not this position. This bit, and you know, if this position is wrong, I don't want to be right. You know what I'm talking about? 
This position does not make me feel subconsciously guilty. Making me feel real good, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'll make you feel real good, you know what I'm saying? All right, let's do it. Let's take on another. Let's take on another. Another brother from another mother. Um, is everybody is everybody here? And you can hear and see, and we are rocking like Skiffy McGee. All right, here we go. We got a newcomer. We got Rhinos411. Sounds like the name of one of those really overpriced, expensive stores for teenage girls. Oh, wait, no, that's Rue21. All right. Can we really keep track of all the really overpriced, expensive stores for teenage girls these days? No, we can't. We can't keep track of it because that's how they want it in society. They just want uh, they want ways to ways to convince you that you need stuff. I'm going to tell you right now, you don't need anything but yourself. I don't mean to go Stuart Smalley on this, but I love you. And you're smart enough, you're good enough, and gosh darn it, people like you. I'm not sure people like Rhinos' position right here, um, but uh, but I certainly enjoy mine. I'm going to bring this knight into f4 and then g6. I might even get some tacticos on uh, d5 here. If I can swing the queen to g3, I'll probably enter on the light scores as well. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to need you to come in on Saturday. Whoever gets that reference first is awesome. Uh, whoever gets that reference first is awesome. Get it. Bam. Check a Ruski. Attack the queen. Now what I need to do is uh, remove this knight and shake and bake. How do I shake and bake the mate here? I don't want to spend too much time trying to figure it out, but I know it exists. Item 9 exists. I'm going to bring the knight to g4. That's what I'm going to do. I don't even care about that rook, obviously. Not my problem. Bring the knight to g4, and then we're going to get checkmate on h6. That's how we're going to do it. Right? This is how we do it. 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 Welcome, Robert0585. Welcome to the Bullet Brawl Show. You are uh, now famous because you played on a Bullet Brawl. You are you are infamous as well because that's how a lot of people feel about these bullet brawls. Don't play too fast. Don't get nervous. Calm down. Calm down. Play your best chess. I believe in you, Robert. I believe in you. Um, but it's getting worse for you. It's getting wild and crazy, and that's Chekalina La Schlamba. Next song. People wonder how exciting the show is. I like to tell them this show goes to 11. That's what I like to tell them. This one goes to 11. All right. Uh, we're going to play the the idea in this line is you're, you're trying to get a structure that's different than a lot of C3 Sicilians, first of all, different than a lot of Alapins, and maybe not the most comfortable approach for your opponent often. Um, and in this way, I think I'm actually going to be able to eliminate this knight, which increases my chances of uh, getting good pressure on the dark squares. Very often in this kind of structure, giving up the light square bishop for the knight is not a problem because you are primed to attack that pawn. In fact, look at how is he defending it now. Just natural moves of increasing pressure, and white is probably lost in this position, honestly. So that's the idea. We're going to go get that pawn, and uh, with it... We're going to bring the noise and the funk on the dark squares. We'll take it, bake it. I'll actually back up and provide some instruction on this game because I've been doing a lot of messing around. You know why I'm doing a lot of messing around? Because I've been getting some suggestions via Twitter and uh, via the members that um, they want me to play more people. And a lot of people... Are looking for their opportunity to play and have some fun on the bullet brawl but if i spend too much time analyzing the games we're not going to get time for um for that to happen so um in this case though i am going to back up and provide a little bit of instruction on this game because i think it's probably beneficial not just for those who play the c3 sicilian but also for those who want to understand the structure better and the approach that i took there um the main thing is, okay, so the Alapin Sicilian is a very principled opening. It's, it's, uh, 
you know, uh, even was it Larson who said that he thought that the open Sicilian was a positional blunder for White? Can someone fact check that for me? Stat guy, can you get on that? Yeah, check if Larson, yeah, stat guy. I just like to pretend that I have a stack guy just sitting here. Um, I believe it was Larson who said that the open Sicilian, which strategically is this approach where White is giving up a center pawn. It's what I play as White uh, in order to challenge Black's control over the dark squares that he's trying for in the Sicilian. This is a chess history lesson here. All right, don't sit here and be like, oh my gosh, here goes Daniel Rent. No, I'm about to give you some knowledge. I'm about to feed you baby birds. and I'm about to give you a chess history lesson. You're welcome. It's going to help you understand this better. The point is that Black is trying to control the center with the, in the Sicilian without actually using the center pawns. What does that say? It means potentially he has a lot of flexibility. If he can use the center pawns for anything else he deems later, Black. that's why the Sicilian is such a dynamic, popular opening. It has a very clear agenda, and it, it's probably one of the most principled moves to counteract e4 with. e4 gives up control of the dark squares, and e5 and c5, is there a reason why they're the two most popular ways for GMs to play? Probably because they're the most principled approach. Um, and so what White does in most open Sicilians, and this is how most top players play, so I'm not sure that Larson was correct. That's how I play. Is they challenge the center, immediately giving Black the Nimzovich positional advantage of two center pawns versus one. So if you ask chess theorists from a long time ago, they would say that the open Sicilian is a positional blunder for White. Because Black now has two center pawns versus one. And... But what White is doing is White is taking that approach that he has an open center, therefore more direct pressure, and he has a lead in development. So White is getting this, you know, better place pieces in the center, more control over the open lines, and a slight lead in development in exchange for this sort of thing. But so that's that's one of the approach. But the Alapin has this theory that White is gonna not White is not gonna give Black control over D4, but he's also not gonna give you the two center pawns. So the open Sicilian doesn't give black control over d4 that we just looked at, but it does give black the two center pawns. The Alapin has an approach that says this. If you play moves like d6, which don't seem very good, and I get d4, and if you just take it, well, now look. Now we have an equal structure. I no longer gave you two center pawns versus one. This is white talking out loud here. But my pieces are much better placed. I have more control over the critical squares. And if you ask Nimzovich to evaluate this position, he would tell you that white is uh, completely better. And, and actually, in this position, white is much, much better. So, so why do I play this line with d6? that gives white the center um well i'm not playing with the intention of ever taking this pawn unless i get something for it the idea for black in this line which is sort of a sideline is i'm actually trying to create a chain which is going to help me to attack on the queen side later on so instead i play the move knight f6 and this line is sort of a gambit that's based on tactics that after d takes c5 i'm not going to take this pawn because i'd actually lose a piece but rather, instead of taking the pawn, I'm going to play knight to c6 and give up another pawn. Now I would take it and put white in a position where if he continues to capture, we get this real big mess where I take and take f2, and we get a position where I might lose two pieces for the rook, but his king is in the center under attack. And if he doesn't, if he decides, hey, you know what, I don't want to go for that fork town, population me, I'm going to play knight f3. Well, now I get to take back my second pawn, and I've, uh, again, equalized in the center. If anything, black has the potential to be better because I'm the only one left with the center pawn. Again, Nimzovich will be proud. And that's that's the idea behind this line. So many people don't play that, of course. They play the way my opponent did. They leave the tension and play bishop d3 and then knight f3, and they try to meet my pawn chain here with the potential of their own pawn chain here. Makes sense, okay? And if I'm evaluating this position unbiasedly, white should have been a little bit better here. But it's important for white to understand black's goal. My goal is typically two things. One of them is what I did in the game. If I have the opportunity to eliminate this knight, which is a key protector of these dark squares, I'm going to do it. So what move should white play here? I'll give a few seconds pause for those in the audience who are actually going to guess, even though there's probably about a five-second lag going on here. This is apple cider, by the way, non-alcoholic. You calm down. I don't need alcohol in my system to act this way. I was born this way, along with my receding hairline. Now, um, back to what I was saying. The threat, of course, of bishop g4 means that often white should play the move h3, preventing bishop g4. And uh, if, a, if white plays h3, there's a number of ways the position can go. I'm not going to go into all the theory, but let's just say that black has a couple options. One of them is sometimes to take and change the structure with d5. I know I said I'm never going to take it, because by the way, it's not only in my advantage not to take it, because it gives white the big center, but also as soon as I take here, what square is now opened up for white? 
I'll give you a few seconds to guess. That's right, the c3 square for the knight. So it's really not in black's interest at all to take that pawn. And I've talked to you guys before about pawn tension. Generally, pawn tension you want to you want to build on. You don't want to you don't want to liquidate until you have a concrete uh, reason, or it, then it's more part of a concrete plan and a combination than it really is to me breaking the rule of pawn tension. Um, so. If White did play h3 here, one idea is that. The other idea, which I've played on in several occasions, is a is a, a line that goes like this. And then you take and play e5 and get the knight to b4. They go back to f1, and then you play a5 uh, just in time for this knight to come back and relocate to c5. Again, this position is probably about equal, maybe a teeny edge to white. This was a, a, a change of the structure uh, and then a, a queenside plan recommended to me actually by, I think, I think one of the German, uh, not Georgian, um, I think Kajashvili, I think Georgi, good boy. Shout out to Georgi, one of the best coaches in the country. I'm pretty, pretty sure he talked to me about this idea. So this is sort of how the game can go. But um, my opponent, you know, didn't understand not only probably this sort of history lesson I just gave you guys, which is important because it tells you little things about why the plans are the way they are when you sort of understand what the philosophy is behind them. Uh, but also, he just didn't understand that if given the opportunity, I was absolutely going to eliminate this knight. Um, and probably in this position, black is already better. Not clearly better, but a little bit better. And after bishop e3, knight d7, black is almost winning. I mean, a move like d5, by the way, I don't even have to take here and try for anything. I can just play here first and then trade and then take there. Um you know, so there's just a number of reasons why white actually has a whole heap load of problems here just by simple moves. Black is getting complete control over the dark squares, and with it, I actually, what did he play? He played knight c3, and I won a pawn, and the rest was sort of Bob's your uncle. So there's a quick lesson as far as one of the things that is dynamically risky about the Alapin is the lack of development. I talked about the philosophy of wanting to get d4 so that you could strengthen your center with the two pawns, but one of the things that is risky behind a move like this is that it clearly takes away a square for the knight, which is a usually a uh, very important developing move. And so you're, you're making a, a sacrifice of the development of your queen side in order to risk it to get the big center. Now, you know my philosophy. You have to risk it to get that biscuit, but you also have to understand what you're risking and how good the biscuit is, because if it's Betty Crocker, uh, right? If it's Bisquick, everybody loves it. If it's one of those things that comes in the Pillsbury can and you open, it goes, <laughs> explodes. My kids love that. Anytime we're making biscuits in the house, I just give them the can. I say, here, open it for me, and they always forget every time. It's hilarious. They open it and go, ah, right? A little scream. Let's go on to the next game, shall we? Because right now I'm going a little nonsensical. Stonewall 97, welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the big show. In general, it is advised that people challenge me after a game. Um, I actually have multiplay on, which means I could play a simul, as you've all seen me do before. Um, and uh, if I if I if I did go with with multiplay, I um, it doesn't it, it's not a requirement that you challenge me again. I'm still going to get your challenge, whatever the lingering ones were. It sits on the server until I get to it. But um, but if you want to make sure you have a chance to challenge me, you can do that. Make sure you challenge me right after a game. It might be an opening, an open slot, right? You got to slide in there before it's too late. All right, um, I'm gonna play a6 and b5 and go get that bishop pair. Some people go get that money. Some people ask you to show them the money. Hashtag Cuba Gooding Jr. reference. Um, some people just say go get it, go get that bishop pair. I'm gonna do it right now. I'm gonna do it. Do it. Get some uh, get some title players on here. I think I wonder if uh, there are any strong players waiting in the queue. We've already had our first best of five. We started off with a best of five today, and I was feeling it. I'm not gonna lie. I felt I felt right about it. I felt real good, real good inside about that best of five. You get a pawn, bishop to a4, and really gang up on that c2 pawn. Looks like it could be fun. All right, who do we got next? We got uh, study math. You know what? I don't like it when you tell me what to do. First of all, I don't like studying. Second of all, I don't like math. Third of all, I don't like you asking me to go study math. However, if you're sort of making more of like just a general statement, like you study math, or like maybe you're talking like a study, like a math study, then I forgive you. But if it's a declarative, uh, you know, statement, I think declarative is the right term. It's been so long since I knew anything about anything. Although my wife's a, my wife's an elementary school teacher, you'd think I would know something, right? Declarative, imperative. I guess imperative. Declarative is a statement. Imperative is a, is a command, 
Yeah, that's probably right. Um, right now, I'm just playing Tickle with the position, opening up some pawn weaknesses so I can play knight e5, and after he takes, I'm going to take and then play f4. That's my idea. That's my Rudy Tutti fresh and fruity. Uh, we'll play f3 first. And then we're going to open up some lines for our pieces. Well, that's a piece, so we don't even need to play f4. He probably could have brought the knight back to d6. I think he just didn't realize that that was unnecessary sackage. Now I'm going to put the knight on f6, forking him, and with it, bringing home the bacon. Then we're going to go here and four and pin him. Then I'm going to drive the h-pawn and uh, not quite... Not quite the best showing for Mr. Study Math here today. Maybe he needs to go study a little chess instead of math, right? LOL. Right? Hashtag. Classic. Classic joke. Classic trash talk joke about needing to improve your chess study. I'm just kidding. I'm not trash talking against anybody here because I actually, you know, I'm trying to hurt your feelings. I'm trash talking you because I love you, right? I know that sounds like a really abusive relationship. It sounds like something an abusive person would say. Like, I'm only doing this because I love you. <laughs> I don't want to go any farther because that could get a little inappropriate. Okay, hashtag, you don't want to go into those kind of jokes. But, uh, all right, now we got Addy Patty, 2 by 4 Addy Patty loves playing me on the bullet brawl. Loves taking his shots downfield. He's a big shot downfield kind of guy. If he were a quarterback, he'd be a Ben Roethlisberger, right? Sort of stuck in the middle ground of, is he great? Did he win that Super Bowl? Like, was it a fluke? Is he just a part of a great organization? Am I just going to go downfield? I don't really know that this reference is relevant. I really don't think Addy Patty is like the Ben Roethlisberger of bullet chess. I don't know why I said that. I apologize, Addy Patty. That made no sense at all. Not that Ben, Roethl ben Roethlisberger is the worst company you could ever keep, you know, I mean, just to point that out, he's not the worst company you could ever ask for. Um, these positions are always just super fun and messy, and I learned something the other day about myself. I learned that I shouldn't be thinking about playing good moves. That's what I learned. I know. I know what you're thinking. Way to go, Danny. Way to finally learn your lesson of trying to play high-quality chess moves. I know. Exactly. This is just... This is getting real ugly real quick for Addy Patty. Yeah, Boomtown. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that to the bank. That's a dragon. That was a win in the dragon. All right. We've been here before. Not our first rodeo. I already lost the tempo with E3, an unnecessary tempo. But we'll see if it actually matters. Probably it won't. We're happily taking that pawn and then gaining a tempo. We'll come attack b7 just to see how that goes. Likely we're going to... Oh, I'm, I'm mouse slipping. I need to figure out my mouse. Seriously, both e3, I'm mouse slipping. I need to see me flexing my wrist as if it's going to make a difference. Oh, yeah, just play g6. Just put that pawn on g6. Now get castled. Do it. Uh, all right, fine. We'll play here. Go attack that pawn. See how he chooses to defend it. He chose... Holy. Who gets that reference? He chose wisely. Right? Probably one of the greatest movies of all time. I'm not just saying that because I'm an Indiana Jones fan. You guys already know that. I'm saying that because it really was one of the greatest movies of all time. Addy Patty is just falling apart right now. I'm not going to say that I don't appreciate it. Um... But he is. He's just falling apart. What's he doing? He's attacking things, that's for sure. Uh, I don't even know what you're doing anymore, Addy Patty. Am I losing on time? Is that what's going on? Am I losing on time? I don't think I'm losing on time. I think you're just busted, homie. Uh, we'll just go here. Probably I could have played King B1. Whatevs. Whatevs. Bam Town, two in a row. I'm feeling it today because Maddie D. Perrine humiliated me like yesterday. He humiliated me in front of everybody and stole 30 of my rating points. Huh. It was frustrating, Jill. Why don't you just leave him? 
Sarah, why can't you just leave him? I can't leave him, Jill. My CDs are in his truck. I'm going to stick this thing out for five more years and then end it violently. Kidding. That's a Dane Cook reference. That's one of the funniest skits he ever did. The bad relationship one. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what, what I'm doing. Oh, I'm losing. I'm playing horrible in this game. I'm literally just losing pieces. That I, I wasn't even paying attention because I was so focused on the on the Dane Cook reference I was making. So that wasn't good. Uh, I have to find a way to create some kind of attack. Hashtag my only chance. So what is that going to look like? I don't know. I'm just down. I mean, I just I wondered a piece. I really should just be resigning this game and playing again, right? That's what I should be doing, but I'm not. I'm not going to because I'm stubborn and I'm frustrated. Frustrated with my play.